Now, let's start working on this project and first we're going to set up the project using Docker. I'm using Windows and I have WSL2 with Ubuntu installed on my operating system. If you don't have that set up, I recommend to check my video in which I show you how you can set up WSL2 with Ubuntu and Docker on your Windows machine. Okay, once you do this, once you follow this, then you will have this Ubuntu on Windows. And as soon as you open this, you're going to have the following Ubuntu terminal. From here, you can run, execute any Linux commands. Okay, so I assume that you already followed my previous video or in some way you have this Ubuntu in your Windows machine available. Or if you're following this on Mac or Linux, that's also totally fine because this is actually Linux um, terminal and we're going to work right here. Okay, now we're going to set up the Laravel project. First, I'm going to navigate inside www folder because I have all the, my projects inside this folder. And now we're going to install Laravel. For this, let's go into laravel.com, go into documentation, go into installation section and click this sale on Linux. So right here, we're going to execute the following command. I'm going to copy and paste this right here. And basically this using CURL, this is just downloading the following content, which is actually an empty Laravel project and then executing bash on that. So this contains now, this is actually a bash script, which will be executed once this is downloaded. And whenever this is executed, it's going to download the Laravel project and it's going to run the composer install and do all these things. OK, so I am going to rename this example app and call Laravel social media website. OK, I'm going to hit enter. And it will take a couple of minutes, um, seconds, depending on a couple of things. So I have run this command um, recently. That's why it's going to be very fast for me. It's going to take about a minute maximum. But in your case, if you're running this the very first time, it will take a couple of minutes, maybe half an hour even, to download the repository. And then it needs to download all the Docker images locally and then create the build and also create the containers out of that. Okay, I'm going to pause the recording right now, even though it's not going to take too much time and continue when this is done. But I think actually this is already done. Okay, right now it is pulling the Docker images, but that images were already available on my operating system on my machine. So it actually finished completely. Okay, so these steps from one, including 11, will take some time uh, if you're running this very first time. Okay, once this is downloaded, then it will ask to provide your root password. Um, so in this case, I'm going to provide my password. And voila, we have this project installed. And it is installed inside the following folder. And in order to start the project, we need to navigate inside the folder and execute this vendor bin sale app. If you don't know what is sale, sale is a wrapper of the Docker created for Laravel. It is a nice command line interface to communicate with the Docker behind. You can easily execute sale up, sale down, sale bash to go inside the container and execute some artisan commands. OK, now let's navigate into this Laravel uh, social media website. And I'm going to type ls-la and I will see all my Laravel uh, project content files. I'm going to open now this using an explorer, explorer.exe, the current folder. And this is this is my project folder. I'm going to click on this www. This is my project. I have a couple of other projects here. And I'm going to open now this using phpstorm. Right click on this, show more options, and open folder as a phpstorm project because I work with phpstorm. And in this tutorial, I'm going to work in phpstorm as well. Uh, the PHP Storm asks me if I want to trust that folder. I'm going to hit the trust. It asks me on the second screen, basically. Now I'm going to move this on the primary screen. And we have this project opened. If you don't use uh, PHP Storm, that's totally fine. You can follow in your favorite um, ID, editor, whatever it is, VS Code, Sublime, anything. If you feel comfortable, you can just follow with that. But um, like PHPStorm is very, very smart IDE. And sometimes when I 
uh, write some particular class which is available in the vendor, PHPStorm automatically imports that for me. And just make sure when you write some class, make sure that if you don't develop with the PHPStorm, your VS Code or Sublime, any, any ID what you are using, is doing the automatic import uh, so that you don't have any issues in your project. Okay, now PHPStorm is indexing my project. I don't need to wait on that. I'm going to start the project. And I can start the project by executing vendor bin sale app. I'm going to hit the enter. Okay, and this will start all my containers. And it's going to do this in a foreground mode. So I will see all the output right here. But I can also execute this using uh, in a detached mode, in a background mode, which is more convenient for me. So I'm going to actually stop this part using Ctrl and C. It's going to stop all the containers. And then I'm going to execute vendor bin sale up dash D. Now it's going to again start um, all the containers, but then it's going to do this in the background mode. And I will have still access to this terminal. Okay. Here we see. So I have still access on the terminal. However, the containers are up and running. And if I want to stop my containers, I will just execute vendor bin sale stop. Those are like two basic sale commands up and stop. If you execute sale down, it's going to remove all the containers, um, which is probably not recommended, not what we want to do. And if I want to go inside the main container, which is the Laravel container, I will execute vendor bin sale bash. Okay, now I am inside the container from which I need to execute all the PHP artisan commands. Okay, that was a quick introduction. Now let's open the browser and I'm going to type localhost, simply localhost, and I will see my Laravel application up and running. And I'm going to develop on the localhost. Although I think laravel.test domain is also available, but anyway, I'm going to work this on localhost. So we have installed the project with the Docker. Now, I'm going to install the Laravel Breeze with the Vue.js. So, for this, we're going to execute inside from inside the container. So, I will need to go inside the container, and from here, I'm going to execute composer require Laravel slash Breeze dash dash dev. So, I want this package only for the, um, during the development. So, I'm going to hit enter. It's going to just download the Laravel Breeze and it will ask me which version of Breeze I want to install. It's going to take a few seconds. Actually, sorry, uh, first we just installed the Laravel Breeze using Composer Require, but we want to actually run the install command. So we're going to execute php artisan breeze colon install. Now this will ask me which Breeze tag I want to install. I have this blade with Alpine, Alpine JS, Livewire, I have React with Inertia, View with Inertia and API only. And in this case, I'm going to choose View with Inertia because this is the technology I'm going to develop my application. I'm going to hit enter. It, it's also asking me which um, additional optional features I want to choose. Dark mode, Inertia, SSR and so on. I'm going to choose just a dark mode. And I'm going to hit enter here. Which testing framework do you prefer? I actually am not going to write tests for this particular project, but I think I need to choose something, so I will choose PEST right here. And now it's downloading Inertia related packages, the uh, Ziggy package as well. And I will explain what is Ziggy a little bit later. And I think we have it ready. Few more seconds. If you want to see the documentation of this Laravel Breeze, now let's go to the documentation and I'm going to search for Breeze. We can click on this Laravel Breeze, the installation section, and let's search for the installation section. And here we see that we need to first require Laravel Breeze, and then we're going to execute Breeze install, what we just did. And we're going to also execute the artisan migrate, npm install, and npm run dev. This is actually already running npm install for me, I guess. 
okay that was done it's also running npm build it built all the files inside this public folder and everything is actually really good now i'm gonna open my project again and right now i i am not refreshing this just pay attention to the top right corner we don't see anything right here i'm going to just reload and i will see login and register and whenever i click this log login or forward password or go back and click on register pay attention to this reload icon so we have now single page application working so which means that when i navigate between pages not the entire page is reloaded okay this is the power of inertia so we have the single page application and if we check the network if i reload the page i will see a lot of requests are made some of them are for css some of them are for javascript and now i'm going to clear this and click this on forgot your password and only very few requests are made not only all the requests are made right here okay i'm gonna mm, go to the main page remove this click on register so those are basically the requests to the build files actually right now we have this as a very built version but we can actually start the development version npm run dev okay now if i reload this okay so this is the development version And look at this. Once the assets are loaded, when we navigate between pages, only one request is made. Okay, look at this. Okay, awesome. So this is our single page application and we have Inertia installed.